Hi, I'm John R. and welcome back to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'll be your instructor today and we're going to talk about patinas, specifically patinas for copper. We're going to make red and green on a copper surface. In our other videos we've shown you how to apply textures and create interesting shapes that make your jewelry interesting. Color, specifically from patinas, can add a lot to your work. So, what I'm going to do before I start is I'm going to safety up. Now, if you haven't watched the safety video yet, you should maybe stop and take a look at that. Today I'm going to be using heat, so I'm going to put on my safety glasses. This will keep anything that heats up from jumping into my eyeballs and blinding me. Your eyes are priceless, so protect them. And you should probably protect yourself by putting on a smock or an apron. Today I'm going to be using a pan with enough water in it to cover my work and I want this to come to a rolling boil. That's an active bubbling of the, of the liquid. The pan should be big enough that the piece will fit into and like I said the depth of the water should only be to a depth that will just cover the piece. If you put too much water in the pan you're wasting energy and it's going to make it really hard to pick it out later with your tongs. Now I'm going to heat the piece on a piece of hardened charcoal that's sitting on a flame resistant surface. This is a ceramic kiln shelf. Now, if you have an annealing pan full of pumice, that would be great, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color some of the links that I made in a previous video, uh, both red and green. So, let's get this water up to a good boil. Remember, we want it really active, and we're gonna heat up at least one of the links. Now. Let me put the link onto the charcoal block. You can hear the water beginning to boil. And let me bring out the torch. It's a big, big muscle. Now, this is like doing surgery with a butter knife. It's big, it's clunky, it's not very accurate. There are more precise torches. And if you can afford one of those, that's great. But if you only have a few dollars to spend, you could get a torch like this at any hardware store. Now this one's equipped with an automatic striker that will light the flame. If you buy one that doesn't have this feature, you actually need to purchase a striker. Now the striker goes above the nozzle where the flame comes out. And what you want to do is fill this portion, like a little hat, with gas and then you want to make it spark. The spark will ignite the gas and you'll be able to use the torch safely. You don't really want to use matches or a lighter because that gets your hand a little too close to the action. You want to be as safe as possible. Okay, our water is coming to a rolling boil right now, and this is going to be almost like magic. So let me light the torch, heat this piece, and drop it into the water. We want the piece to get hotter than it is to be annealed, but not melting. That's a good temperature, keep the heat on it. Okay, so let's see what we got. So there's our copper link, nice and red, a little bit of black still on it, and you can see how it's darker and richer than the original copper, and that's a great surface patina because it's very durable, it won't wear off. When it's dry, it may not be as red as you'd like it to be, but we can wax it and make it look really red and shiny. And I'll show you that later on in the video. So let's turn the water off and let's talk to, talk to you guys about how to make green patina happen. Now, the way that you build a green patina is you want to use ammonia and salt. So let me show you how to do it if you have a larger piece. So what you're going to need, you're going to need a container with a tight fitting lid that goes on top of it. Now I'm using a glass container just because I don't want it to affect what we're doing at all. And what I want to put into the container is something that's non-porous that will allow the object that I'm putting into it to sit up above the fluid level that I'm going to put into the pan. 
if the fluid touches the object, it will take off the patina. So in this case, I'm using a copper bowl, and you can see that it's very, very clean and shiny. You want your work to be as clean as possible for this type of operation. So what I do to set this up is I'm going to take some ammonia, and this is a lemon scented ammonia, it could be just a regular ammonia, and I just want to pour a little bit into the container. Not so much that it's going to creep up onto the bowl. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of coarse sea salt and I'm going to drop this into the, into the ammonia. Now this is going to create a very, very obnoxious gas that may bother your nose, so you may want to work a little quickly. So you'll rest your piece back on top of your non-porous object and you close your container. Now this needs to sit anywhere from about an hour to 24 hours, but you probably don't want to leave it in more than a day because believe it or not, the ammonia and salt is so corrosive, it could eat holes through that bowl. So let me set this one aside, and I'll show you one that I did previously. Now, this is the type of patina that you're going to develop. It's kind of a Statue of Liberty green. It's, a ver it's called a Verde Gris green. And you can see that it also turns the copper kind of a deep, rich brown. Now, any copper jewelry is going to turn brown, or it could be corroded to this red or green, or maybe even made black. And what I would say is, it's going to turn some color, so you better embrace the fact that it's going to change. Now, if you want this to look a little bit richer, what you do is you can get some wood wax, or the best thing would be microcrystalline wax. Now, a wax for wood is going to be a lot cheaper. The microcrystalline wax is very expensive. But you don't want to use car wax, because car wax has an antioxidant cleaner in it that's going to wipe away all of your patina if you use it. So use a wax that doesn't have that antioxide cleaner in it. You can use your fingers, or if you're a little squeamish, I could use a little bit of a paper towel. And what you want to do is just get a little bit of wax on there, and then just swipe the surface lightly with the wax. Now, you don't want to put a big coat of wax on it, just a fine film of wax. And what you want it to do is you want it to just kind of dry and go dull. Now, once the wax dulls, it's ready to be buffed, just like you're buffing your shoes. So, hold your piece, take a soft shoe shine brush, and just pretend that you're buffing your dad's shoes. Maybe grandpa's. Just takes a couple minutes, and you'll see, I'll do one side a little bit more than the other for you. You can see how it's now pretty shiny, and it made the patina look a little bit richer and deeper. Now, there's another way to patina smaller objects and to get a more modeled or crazy looking finish on it that looks like it was buried for hundreds of years. The way that you do that is you take a plastic Ziploc bag, doesn't matter what brand, and you're going to need some wood chips. Now, these wood chips are for the type for uh, hamster cages. You could get sawdust from your local hardware store, or you could get uh, curls of uh, wood for, you know, cedar chips for hamster cages or other types of little animals. And what you do is you're going to saturate this material with ammonia. So basically you're making like a kitty litter box, and kitty drank a lot of water. So there you go. So it's, it's very, very saturated. And you want to let this wood soak up the ammonia. And if you put a little too much ammonia in, guess what? All you have to do, add a little bit more wood. All right, so you let the ammonia saturate the wood. And then what you want to do is you're going to take the rock salt and you just salt the wood. 
doesn't take very much, probably maybe less than a teaspoon. But what I would do is close the bag and really work this material together. Okay, so once it's mixed up, what I can do is I could take the chain and just drop it into the bag and literally just bury it in the wood chips. Now again, this will take about an hour to 24 hours for it to have an effect on the chain. And what will happen is, wherever the wood, which is saturated with the ammonia, wherever that touches the copper, it'll prevent it from turning. But if there's an air pocket or a gap in between the wood, the air will fumigate the material and it will cause it to turn green. So you're going to get a really blotchy sort of effect. Now, when it comes out of the bag, you want to let it dry. And if there's any crusty parts on it, you want to lightly brush that off and then wax it so that the patina will stay on it for a much longer period of time. So let's give this some time and we'll show you what it looks like in just a few, in, a, in about an hour or so. Okay, it's been about an hour or so since we put our bracelet into the wood chips and ammonia and salt. So let's see what we got. Now when you take this out of the bag, don't be surprised if it's pretty strong smelling. You might want to just close that bag right up again. And you're probably going to have a little bit of debris on it. So anyway, you, what you want to do is just lay it out and let it dry. So you can see that there's a big difference between the green patina and the red patina. And just to give you an idea of where we've gone from, here are a link and a clasp of the same type of copper bracelet. And you can see how the untreated material is very different looking from the two that we colorized. You might like the way your copper bracelet looks after you finish making it, but that bright shiny copper is going to turn some color. So you might as well try to control it with one of these patinas. This will add a lot of visual interest to your work just by the, the introduction of color. Now, let's put them together and see what they look like together. The uh, links are super easy to work with. And if you haven't seen our copper bracelet video yet where we made this project, you might want to check it out right after you look at this video. Um, you'll find that it's extremely easy to follow and the, the uh, product that you can make is very versatile. You could use these links to make earrings, you could make a necklace or the bracelet, and you can easily combine these links with other links of your own design to make something really special. So let me add these together. Alright, just a couple more to go. It's looking good. Alright. And ta-da! There we go. We've now got green and red links alternating on our bracelet. So, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, uh, video and I hope you'll take a look at some of our other videos as well as some of the products that we have available on the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm John R. and I thank you for viewing. Bye!